Hello everyone, this is Kevin Morsefield from Autodesk. I'm a NetFab technical sales specialist and today I want to show a feature that's in NetFab software where we can put a cage around small parts before 3D nesting the parts. So when you have a lot of small parts and you build, for instance, on a Jet Fusion HP machine, sometimes the small parts, you know, are hard to find in the part cake, what I call it, or the build volume of material. And it can be a lot easier if the parts are in a cage. And it's also convenient to clean the parts that are in the cage. You know, you can sandblast them in there. And also, um, you can even uh, ship the parts to the customer in the cage. So it's very convenient. So I wanted to show that feature today. I've already brought in a bunch of parts to 3D Nest. And I want to bring in some smaller parts. We have a parts library. I'm going to grab the screw part here and make some copies here bring that into the middle here and we'll go ahead and make 50 of these we got our 50 copies here and what you do is you select the parts so i'm going to select the 50 screws here and we're going to go to the range ribbon and then over to the packing ribbon uh, ribbon of the range and pick create package and it will automatically create a cage around the parts now you do have the option to name and write on the on the cage typically you can write the company name or how many parts are in the are in the cage you can also change the thickness of the cage to make it a little easier maybe a thinner cage to actually cut open and get the parts out but like i said it's very convenient to keep them in there and uh, sandblast the parts to get the nylon powder for example off the parts and keep them all together so we have all these parts i have the viewing platform on here and we'll go ahead and go back to our range ribbon 3d packing monte carlo and we'll go ahead and put, uh, we'll leave it at four millimeter spacing arbitrary and start packing. And in a few seconds here, you'll see the parts start to nest into the build volume here. And you'll see a countdown of how long it's taken. We'll let it run for about 30 seconds. You can let it run a little longer here as you see it start packing just going to try to bring the parts down to a, a smaller uh, pack volume so I'll go ahead and stop that Wait about 30 seconds there close that out and now you can see the parts here are all within the cage and all the parts are packed I do want to show you one more thing here we want to go ahead over here on the left and we can bring in a uh, your uh, 3d printer machine platform i'll go ahead with the jet fusion hp machine and go grab all the parts here select them all and what we can do is just drag these into the jet fusion 3d printer platform and then re-nest these parts what's nice about this is you can then open up different machines if your company has different technologies you can separate your parts to the different platforms over here on your parts list you can add different 3d printers so i have all these parts on here um, and we're going to go ahead and re-nest these parts to fit into the hp machine keep in mind you want to select the the cage part with the screws in it or it will actually take the screws out of it and nest it i'll show you that way first and then we'll go ahead and lock it down you have to actually lock it down so it doesn't so the parts stay within the cage when you 3d nest again so if i go to the range ribbon monte carlo and we go and we'll restart packing this let this run for about 30 seconds and we should see the screws get out of the cage and then i'll just do an undo and i'll show you how we can lock a bigger part in the platform to nest around that uh, particular part 
in that sense, then for the cage with the screws in it. So the parts are starting to pack here. I'll let it run a few more seconds here. We'll stop that at 30 seconds there. And as you see the cage, all the screws have come out of the parts cage here because I needed to select it and lock it. So let me just do a undo. And then we'll go and select all the screws and the cage. And this is very helpful, like I said, if you have a big part, big geometry, you can insert that first into the build and then run the 3D nester to nest the parts around that to make it a little quicker and easier. Put the big part in there first. It just makes it a lot quicker for the algorithm to nest the parts around. I will then go to the range ribbon again, Monte Carlo, and we're going to lock the position of what I've selected here, the cage and the screws in there, and start packing again. And this time, everything will nest around the cage and the screws will stay in there. And we'll let this run 30 seconds or so also. And there it goes. It's starting to pack the 3D geometries, trying to get the pack volume fraction as low as it can get. I'll go ahead and stop this. Now if we look here, find that cage, you'll see that the, the screws here have stayed in the cage. And that's what we want to do. So again, keep that in mind when you're taking parts and you're 3D nesting them and you have the cage part to make sure you mark it, lock it, so you can nest around uh, those geometries with uh, cages in it. And um, you'll get a quick, easy way to 3D nest your parts to save time and save material. Again, this is Kevin Morse, Social Model Desk. Thank you.